Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. It's Sunday morning, June the 30th, 2019. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk Demetrius Andre. Right? Let me just say this to the gamblers out there. I know the public right now, and deservedly so, exalts Saul Alvarez. Right? Exalts Gennady Golovkin. We've seen them in big fights for years. We've seen them deliver against big time opponents. But there are other guys out there. And if a fight is announced between Saul Alvarez, for example, and Demetrius Andre, you're probably going to get great odds out the gate. The public doesn't know Andre, even though Andre has a share of the title at 160 pounds. So if they give you better than a plus 200 on Andre, whoever he's fighting, it could be Canelo, it could be Golovkin, it could be Callum Smith, right? If they give you better than a plus 200, the betting side of the play is to take Demetrius Andre. This is an elite, fluid fighter at the top of his game. Now by chance, it's purely coincidence, I made a video yesterday where I criticized Ray Beltran for not hiding his body early against Richard Kami in the lightweight title fight that took place yesterday. Right? And I made the argument that what Beltran should have done is Beltran should have bent at the waist, right? If you come in vertical, if you're too upright, a guy who can throw punches to the head and body with the same hand and hide where he's going with the punch, right? In other words, with Richard Kami, as with Danny Garcia, the guy starts to throw a hook. You don't know if the hook's coming up top. You don't know if it's going down low. My point in the video is when you're upright, you're at risk. You don't even know what to block. It could be a shot up top. It could be a shot down low. You guess wrong. The guy comes in and hurts you. But if you bend at the waist, and the only part of you that's in the frame, the only part of you that is within range of your opponent's right hook is your head. Then you know the guy can't hit your body and you can also put a hand up for your head. Now I criticize Beltran for being a little bit too upright and unprepared for Comey's right hook. Everything I criticize Beltran for doing wrong Demetrius Andre does right. Right? In this fight, there's a knockdown in the first round. What I want people to do is to frame the first round. It's a masterpiece. Andre's big for 160. He's tall. <clears throat> but yet, this is a guy who comes in and who fights low. In other words, he hides his body. He's leaning forward. It's even better than that. He's bending his legs. You'll notice he's using his thigh muscles. He's a southpaw, which makes it even more devastating. So Selecki comes out and is against a big middleweight who's giving him nothing to hit. In other words, Andre has it so his body's hidden. He's coming in low. Selecki can't even think about Andre's body. Andre's coming in at an angle where he's loading up on left hands, his dominant hand, since he's a southpaw. Let me also say, too, I've mentioned fluidity. I've given you my theory on why I think Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk are the best at heavyweight. Right, special mention to Joseph Parker, who's also fluid at times, right? 
Guys who are fluent, think a jazz drummer versus a traditional drummer, right? Guys who are fluid, who can break tempo, who can come in mid-tempo, who see you setting up. Let's say, let's say Selecki has to have his right foot in a certain position, have his body in a certain position to throw a big right hand. Guys who are fluid will see you setting up that position. Right? We'll see you, you know, getting ready to lean into your lead left foot. And they'll move. Right? They're fluid. They can break tempo. They're not going to allow you to get into your rhythm. So by the midway point of this fight, and it's breathtaking. Right? Andre starts showing you that he can break tempo. He can force Selecki to move just when Selecki wants to throw punches. In other words, Selecki's left foot's in front of his right foot. Andre can then move off to the side, so Selecki has to lift his lead foot back up. So what Andre starts doing in the middle of the fight is he starts shuffling. I'm not kidding. He starts shuffling. You notice in terms of balance, this is beyond just hand speed. In terms of balance, the ability to shift weight, body control, he's just much more fluid than Selecki. So Selecki can't even set up the punches he wants to throw. This is while Andre is shuffling his feet He's channeling Ray Leonard Ali. He channels Leonard to the point where he actually starts throwing bolo punches. Right? Think Ray Leonard against Roberto Duran, the rematch. And Selecki really can't do anything about it because the problem is Andre can fight on the move. Selecki can't. Right, Selecki's a guy who wants you in front of him so he can get leverage on that front foot and then throw power shots. Selecki's a guy who wants to throw power shots to the head or the body and keep you guessing. Andre takes that away from him because Andre ne doesn't allow Selecki to get in a position where he can lean on that front foot. And, of course, Andre is being offensive while he's moving around, right? So what I want people to do is to just look at the body control that Andre is showing. Revisit the first round and understand that Andre, while hiding his body, is being highly offensive and is throwing several straight left hands. Just key on the left hands, one of them drops Selecki. Right? So understand, Andre isn't just moving. He's moving and being offensive. Understand, too, there's a three dimensional side to Andre's game. You don't even know that he's taller than six feet. So Andre, of course, is changing the angles. So let's say Selecki is hoping to hit him in the chin. Right? You'll notice Andre, it's high one minute, then he's low. He's completely keeping Selecki off balance. Selecki never gets his balance for long enough to mount a serious offensive attack. This is elite stuff. Now, I've heard Andre in interviews say that if he fights Canelo, and understand, there was a left-handed component to Canelo Danny Jacobs. Canelo in the pre-fight hype was saying, look, if Jacobs goes southpaw against me, like he did Golovkin, and the southpaw stance threw Golovkin off. Right, Canelo was saying, look at my record, I've done well against southpaws. I'll be able to hang. 
with Danny Jacobs if he goes southpaw. And Canelo was right. Canelo on my scorecard won that fight. Canelo dominated the first part of that fight. Danny Jacobs didn't seem to have a lot of firepower out of a southpaw stance. Now in the stance at that fight was Demetrius Andre. And they asked Andre, how would you fight Canelo? And Andre said, I would have the jab in his face all day. Right? That's what Andre said. Now Canelo wears a knee brace. Right? Canelo is highly skilled, but doesn't move that well. Andre does. And understand, when Danny Jacobs goes southpaw against Canelo, as I said, he didn't have a lot of firepower. What I want you to do is to go to the early part of this fight, especially the first round, where Andre gets the knockdown, and just look at the stiffness and the frequency of the straight left hands that Andre is throwing. Right? So my point to you is simply this. Andre has a real chance a real chance of beating Saul Alvarez. I mean a real chance. The bet's easy to make because the public, the, the casinos, is going to give him less than a real chance. In other words, I'm, I'm positive in my mind that if they announce a Canelo-Andre fight, especially given that Canelo's been on a run Right, Two victories over Golovkin. He beats the champ at 168, Rocky Fielding. Comes back and beats Danny Jacobs. Because Canelo has delivered, not two wins over Golovkin, a draw officially and a win. I thought he lost both, but a lot of people go by official decisions. Right, So since Canelo officially is on a run, Right? I'm guessing you're going to get a plus 150 or higher on Demetrius Andre if that fight's ever announced. My point to you is if they throw out a plus 200, you have to stop the business meeting and say, excuse me, you got to call your associate and say, please place a bet on Demetrius Andre for me at the plus 200 at the casino. Let me say this too. Golovkin's getting a little bit older. Now Golovkin, it's hard to read his feet, right? Because Golovkin's unorthodox. Golovkin also will run at a guy. In other words, you'll notice Selecki continues to be patient in terms of coming forward. I want you to contrast that with Golovkin running at Kell Brook. Golovkin running at Canelo in the first fight. Right? So if Andre's in front of Golovkin, Golovkin is going to run at Demetrius Andre to close the distance. But again, I want people to see the stiffness of Andre's straight left. Right? I want people to see how little Andre gives you to hit. Right? Of all the fighters out there right now, within range of Golovkin's weight class, right? We're not including the heavyweights, <laughs> Wilder, Ruiz. I'm not including them. I'm saying of the guys within Golovkin's weight class. And let's be clear, too. The weight's becoming a problem for Golovkin. That last fight was at 164. When you're a fighter in your late 30s, it's harder to lose those last few rounds. If Golovkin were to fight Andre, and you hear the fights at 160, for Andre's title, understand weight-wise, Golovkin's going to be at a disadvantage. Right? Of all the fighters out there right now, and this includes Jamal, excuse me, Jamal Charlo, who I still feel lost to Matt Korobov. Right? Of all the fighters at 160, and at 168 right now. I believe the fighter who gives Golovkin the hardest matchup 
would be Andre at 160 pounds. Right? Andre is simply too fluid. You can't find his body. I believe the southpaw stance bothers Golovkin. With regard to Canelo, I'll say this. Danny Jacobs out of a southpaw stance isn't close to Andre out of a southpaw stance. What I want people to do, too, is just compare Canelo's legs. And Canelo, excellent defensively, right? You saw in that last fight, he has upper body movement up top. Canelo's hiding his body while standing right in front of you. Right? Canelo has excellent upper body movement. The difference, though, is when it comes to picking up your feet and moving to a different spot. Andre is much lighter on his feet than is Saul Alvarez. A big part of Canelo's game are those body shots. What happens if a guy takes away his body and doesn't give Canelo the opportunity to find his body? Right? So Andre is serious, as I said. If they announce a fight against Canelo or Golovkin and you hear that Andre's a better than two to one underdog, ooh, I believe that bet makes itself. This guy is dangerous. Let me also say too, pay close attention to Andre's weight. Because Andre himself is in his early thirties. Right? Clearly he was in shape here, better shape than Beltran was for the lightweight challenge, right? Clearly he's in great shape here and he's keeping himself in great shape. But let's be real here. If Andre suddenly starts ballooning up in weight between fights, we'll have to revisit this. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.